Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. You know, most designers and engineers have become quite adept at setting up simple stress analysis using embedded tools in mechanical design programs like Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks, and Solid Edge. But setting up fluid problems in a more advanced analysis program requires understanding the input the software needs and how a real-world scenario is expressed in mathematical terms. So I've asked Gilles Egenspieler from ANSYS to walk us through what might be the most perplexing parts of a simple CFD simulation. Gilles, welcome, and could you tell us about uh, what you do at ANSYS? Hi, I'm the Senior Product Manager for the Fluid Line, and really I strive to uh, uh, ensure that every engineer and designer out there can uh, use the advantage of CFD and CFD simulation to design better products faster. So let's get right down to it. We're looking at a model here, and could you tell us in everyday plain English what it is that we are trying to find out about this? Yes, we are looking at a valve design, and what we're going to look for is to determine the pressure that is exerted by the flow on the valve. The final idea is that we want to make sure that the pressure is not too high so that the valve would not rupture, for example. Here you are actually looking at two parts. You can see the 3D uh, model, but you can also see, as indicated by the arrow, the actual fluid volume inside the valve and piping system where we're actually going to perform the simulation on. So the next stage we get to is actually the meshed model of the fluid flow. Could you tell us what's important about this meshing process? That is correct, and uh, we indicated two key regions with the arrows. The first one is the region in the vicinity of the wall. It is very important to resolve it correctly, put enough mesh points to resolve the flow at the wall. And the second arrow is actually in the region where the valves open and close. You have complex flow structure in this area. And again, we need to make sure we put enough grid points to actually resolve those complex flow features in the valve region. So one of the important steps in setting up the scenario is to describe the turbulent model correctly. Explain to us, Jules. Yes, that's very true. So what we have to know is 99% of the industrial flow are turbulent. And actually, turbulence is a very complex area in physics. So there isn't a single model that is available to actually describe uh, all the possible turbulent flow. That is why you see such a long list of models. However, there is a lot of best practices that exist to help engineers select the best turbulence model depending upon their application. You have a lot of information and best practices that are available, for example, on online forums, or you can also do some online search. And of course, if you come, for example, to a CFD provider like, like ANSYS, we will gladly send, uh, send you some best practices to how to best use our models. And the next stumbling block, I believe uh, you said, is setting up the boundary conditions. What do you mean by that, and how does one go about doing it? That's, uh, that's very true. So, for example, in the example of this valve, we're only simulating one part of the system where the valve is. But really, the behavior of the system depends upon the boundary condition, what comes in, what comes out of the pipe, and also what could be the thermal condition of the pipe walls. So it's extremely important to set up correctly the velocity coming in, for example, the pressure at the outlet of the system here, and maybe also the actual turbulence intensity of this turbulent flow we just talked about, etc. All that must be must be uh, set up uh, very accurately uh, from both experimental results, if available, or also best practices, again, when we talk about, for example, turbulence uh, values. So, Gilles, the next thing we have to do in this step is to describe the thermal boundary conditions. What does it mean by that, and how do you go about doing it? Yes, good question. A lot of time, the temperature of the fluid is actually different from the temperature of the surrounding air. So, if we wanted to have the accurate thermal condition and temperature of the fluid, one would actually have to simulate the entire conduction of heat through the pipe, through the structure of the pipe. 
However, what we can do in CFD is actually model that directly instead of simulating it and resolving it. And the user must be careful to choose wisely the wall boundary condition so that they can actually get the accurate temperature of the fluid without having to do extra structural simulations. Okay, perfect, Jules. So at this point, actually, the only thing that remains to be done is to solve this scenario. And in the next episode, we'll look at the results coming out from this exercise with Jules, and he'll help us interpret them. So until then, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering, and Jules, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Kenneth.